Hi, I'm Margaret Hadfield. I'm an Australian professional artist. My videos are intended to give you a really good grounding and also to enhance your existing art practice or to help you on your way as a total beginner. It is not necessary for you to have previous experience. I teach across all mediums and I'm really happy to share my experience and my knowledge with you. Participating in the creative arts provides health and well-being benefits which everyone can use. I regularly connect with my community via Facebook and I share my students' creations as well as my own. Thank you to my Patreons and remember to like and subscribe if you wish to see more of my videos as I release them. Thank you. Keep calm and paint. I got some plants that I put in pots, a money tree for luck and forget me not. Hi, I'm Margaret Hadfield. Uh, today, today's class is about pastels and pastels comes in various forms as well. So I'll give you a bit of background information on pastels before I, I go in and, and use them. So it's probably my least preferred medium because it is fragile, it is chalk after all. But, they, um, but there are times when I do use pastels, particularly uh, life drawing or if I'm doing a portrait and I'm doing a sitting and I have one hour with a person, I'll probably go to pastels because I need to work fast. I feel pastels works pretty quick. Um, you have instant colours, you've got all these um, lovely colours in the packs and um, it's a lot quicker. So I uh, will mix up colours and get skin tone and I'll start to shape and, and use the pastels that, that way. That's me. Uh, mainly because I much prefer oil and acrylic painting. But at the same time, uh, I love it all. And I think you have something to learn from all mediums and that's why I, I teach it all. So it all crosses over. At the end of the day, it's about you looking, looking at what you're doing, uh, looking at the subject and really uh, looking at light and shade and shapes and um, all sorts of things. So it's it in some ways for me, the the medium is, is secondary, so it's about uh, studying the subject. So I have uh, a few examples here. I'll run through the different types of pastels. As I said, I've got dirty hands already, but it doesn't matter. It's only chalk. So I tend to use a hard pastel, uh, which I have on, on my table here, but I'll have a, uh, a new pack so you can see what it looks like. I just happen to like this particular brand and uh, Creta Colour. They're, they're fairly um, a moderate range pastel. So these are a hard pastel, but they're not really hard. And they're still, they're still, you know, a chalk. So they don't come off so easy on your hand, but they still do. But I really do um, prefer to use those with the classes. But I have um, also would recommend having uh, a soft white with it. And I'll show you the difference. So this is a, a hard Creta colour. If I put, I'll put white on the sky there. But if I put a soft white um, beside it, you can see it's, it's much brighter. So I probably would recommend you have a soft white with it as well, just to highlight the special white areas. But um, so I, 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 I like these. Don't be put off by the fact that it says hard. That doesn't mean they're, they're really rock hard or anything. Um, and there's, there's others that are harder. They're a good moderate range um, pastel. So I'd be recommend those. There are also um, a harder pastel here, which is called the Conti. You may have heard of those. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Look at these. So these are much finer and they are certainly harder than the ones I just had in my hand, the Contis of Paris. They are absolutely stunning and I would be using those for a much finer pastel work, finer portraiture or just, just, just smaller works. I wouldn't be using them for really big works because you'd, you'd chew through those pretty quickly. They're just delightful, really gorgeous. But uh, I have to say, um, 
they are over $200 for that pack, but uh, I don't know how much cheaper they'd be in, in France. I don't know, but they're certainly over $200 here in Australia. So the other uh, thought is also pastel pencils. And they're, oh, look at those colours. Nothing turns me on more than really good quality mat art materials. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't take much to please me. Uh, these are a, a pencil form. So obviously they're going to be for finer work as well because you have the, the little point. I, I would suggest that both of the, the last one, the Conti and, and these ones, would be really good for, for doing animals, or fur, um, or facial, uh, but basically nice, fine, fine work. All right, so that's the um, pastel pencils, also very, very good stuff. So um, I'll show you the next lot is the softer pastel. So these ones here are probably a cheapy, cheapy quality and they may be something that um, the school children would use. And these are a soft pastel, but they're very, they do get very messy, these ones. The colours are brilliant and um, so they are not something that I, I would use. They'd be probably more for younger people. You could imagine the, the great mess that uh, children would get into with those. That's the sort of thing that they'll have at school. But uh, it's, still, it's still nice, vibrant colours and a good beginning into pastels. Now, there's, there's many different brands and, and different, um, yeah, different companies making pastels, but the top range will be the, hard, the, um, the soft handmade, hand-rolled pastel. So these ones here are called Unison. They're made in England and I absolutely adore them. They, that white one I had earlier, that was a unison pastel. And sure, they'll come off in your hand. But what I do love about these is that how they just grip to the paper. You don't need to put any pa uh, pressure onto the paper. It just, it just glides onto it. It almost clings to the paper. So I have to say, if you can, um, if you're in England, you probably buy them a lot cheaper than what you can here. These are $10.50 $10 each in my store. They're probably more elsewhere. But uh, so very, very expensive, but worth it because they are so, so stunningly beautiful to work with. You don't have to make a mess. You know, you don't need to use lots of it. And they're just, the pigments are, are really, really lovely. So, but you know, there's a lot of money in there if you start adding $10 each up. But um, so as I recommend, have a white, at least just, just have a good white one and, and, and get a pack of harder ones than if you're just starting. So I've got a couple of examples here as well. Uh, so this one's done with the pastel pencils. I was talking about fur. So you can see here that the, um, it was great to, to get the nice little fur, fur lines of this uh, squirrel. Uh, so I found that as I said, useful for doing, doing fur. I mean, you can do whatever you like. And this is just on a black card, which, which works worked quite well for that. Obviously, I didn't have to, to colour it all in and put the dark colours in there. This one here, now this is on a different type of paper, um, which I'll talk about in a moment, but this is with my Creator Colour um, regular pastels. And yeah, pastelists have developed their own style. You can see I'm a little bit at an angle here. And uh, scribbly, my focus is the bird. And I do find uh, the detailing really, really nice to work. But um, I'll just uh, divert to the papers for a moment. So the papers, are, as you can um, probably well aware, are different colors. Now, uh, there, there are many different types of paper. There's, there's this one which the, the um, red robin is on, is, is quite firm. And this has got a, a grit and it's called pastel mat. Uh, it's a new paper, which I absolutely adore. It uh, has this very velvety feel. This little pad here is $48 and how many sheets? So it's, um, uh, doesn't, I can't see that quick enough, but it's uh, like a velvet and it's just stunningly beautiful to work on. As I said, it just, just don't need much pressure on there. So that is absolutely beautiful. Top of the range, this is like Rolls-Royce pastel paper. 
and uh, certainly I try to give the top quality to my students because they end up with a much better work and so I try to um, experience, let them experience these um, different materials, good quality materials. Now this one's also pretty good but you wouldn't want to be using Conti so this is some um, colour fixed paper, a little bit dirty but it's, um, it's been painted with uh, this colour fixed primer and you, use, you can actually buy the primer in a, in a tub and you can paint it on, but you use a roller. If you just brushed it on, you get brush strokes in your pastel. Yeah, it's all right if you want that. But uh, generally we want a nice smooth finish. Now this is like sandpaper, very, very gritty, which, is, um, chew, which will chew through your pastel like no tomorrow. This will uh, be um, chew through the Contis. I wouldn't use the Contis on this. I'd use the, the thicker ones, the bigger ones. And I, you know, just, again, um, just, yeah, it will knock your pastels around a fair bit, but it's still really effective. And the other thing that's good about this paper is that you can paint on it as well. So you can, you can actually paint in acrylic or oil on this, on this um, particular colour fix paper because it's been primed and just happens to have a grit. Now, beware. Generally, when you're pastelling, you, you, have, you, you use your fingers and you, you rub. Now, this particular paper with its grit was like sandpaper. So one week I was teaching my classes with this and I favoured my middle finger like that. And by the third class, I had this red stuff on the paper. And lo and behold, I'd completely rubbed away my fingerprint and was bleeding on the paper. So don't do that. Um, just be aware. It is just like sandpaper and I was just rubbing with the one finger, so I tend to favour. So anyway, that was um, just, don't get too carried away like I did. And uh, the Metiens paper is also probably the main brand to, to use with pastel. And it comes all in, in different colours. There's just a few left in this pad. It's, uh, it's much thinner, though, than the other ones that I, I showed you. So it, um, what have I got there? I've got, a, got the bucket. <laughs> okay, so they come in various colours. And you use the different colours. And it's basically to stop there from, from being white in the background. So you've got something there. And it really, at the end of the day, it probably doesn't matter what colour you choose because you're covering things as well. And it probably, um, I, yeah, just depends what, what you are doing and what your scene is, whatever it is. If it's like a, um, this one here, I, I went for the black card. So you just choose colours that you like. My piece that I'm going to do today is in hot pink. So lovely, bright pink. And uh, it'll, it'll be fine. So it's just not having white in the background. There's some sort of colour there that it's picking up. But um, this um, lovely... Uh, paper. I, I can't. I can't speak French, so I can't say it. Me tiens tante. Me tante. I, I can't say it. But anyway, that's the brand name, and uh, put out by Canson. So that's probably the the most um, most used and most recognised pastel paper. But uh, anyway, the, so that's sort of the materials. You, you one of the things you need is probably a kneadable rubber and uh, often gets mistaken for, for blue tack around here. The, um, uh, that's, that's probably all, really, in some nice paper. And I think I'm ready to, to start my piece. So I have gone on from, from the uh, perspective and I've got an old shed, which covers, uh, also includes perspective in this shed. So it's, um, this is something I'll, I'll, I'll work on today. So I'll get um, just, I can use a white chalk, a white pastel to draw it in, or I can use one of the colours there, that's all right. So I'll just pop this um, where I can see it, and I'll do the roof line. I'll just do it roughly and draw, draw in. So this is a shed that's probably been knocked down now. Just quickly draw it, set it up. And I'm not going to put I'm not going to put this um, tin in here at all because yeah it looks too new for starters. But this is a nice old old shed. Now that's not enough angle.
So you can see the building goes back this way. And I might need a little bit more angle on that one there. Cool. Okay, so that'll probably do. Right, now to start, I'm going to, I've got this um, collection of, of colours here. It's a real mixture. It started off with a basic landscape set and I've just added two to it. So I'll just start with um, a bit of blue sky. I'll have a pretty, pretty kind of blue here. So you mix the colours just like it was paint. So I'm going to put um, blue down. That's why some of my pestles end up a bit thin. There we go. And one of the things is don't blow that chalk away. So keep that lovely chalk in, in, um, on your paper. Just going to take the white in because that's too bright for the sky. Um, in my photograph here, it's a cloudy sky, but um, it's a bit boring. I'll give it a bit more colour. Look at all that lovely chalk. So now I'll favour my middle finger and I'll just softly work that chalk in. No need to press hard. I tend to go in a circular motion, although some, some, sometimes I feel like going at an angle like that. That's all right. So my idea is just to fill it in as much as possible. The paper has a, a what is called a tooth and that is that grain. Occasionally I go the wrong side by mistake but I find it works just as well on the wrong side, the smooth side. I've actually got too much there, can you believe it? I can push it around and just push it into the tree there. Lovely. See, consider that paint. That is just like paint. Now, if you do have a situation where you have too much, um, you just tap, tap it on its side. But I'll just, I'm pretty well using that up. Okay. Don't know what that is. Oh, that's the other chalk coming through. All right. So now I have some trees in the background. So I'm going to pick up, um, I'm going to do a bit of mixing. I've got a few colors here. Um, I've got this funny green. I'll see what that looks like. Yeah, that's all right. Just putting something on the side. Let's see. I might uh, put some brown or I could put some black. Actually, I could do purple. So there's many choices. You've got all these colors. I'll use a little bit of black. There we go. Mix the two together. It doesn't matter if you go over the shed in this case. One of the other things I forgot to mention is this tool, which is called a paper stump. It's um, very useful as well, as I'll use it later on in the shed. I'll just put a bit of black in there and just darken that a bit more. Let's see how quickly it works. So your fingers are a good shape for, for treetops like that. A bit more over there. Because that end of the shed's quite dark anyway. All right. So it's almost like an undercoat, which is what I, I like. And I'm going to use... Look, I don't mind these actually staying out and just, just being on the side here. Now, I'm going to put in a little bit of light on top of the tree. So I'm going to just put a little, uh, little whip of yellow ochre. Don't know where the light's from, but perhaps a little bit over the top. It's a cloudy day in that picture. If I wanted to do, you know, obviously do skies, I'd do clouds, I would put white over the top, but I'm more interested in getting this shed done. So I haven't fussed with clouds 
at all. There we go. So you can see I'm, I've got my, my pastel at an angle. I've got my finger behind it and I'm just doing a little, little mark like that. Just gently. And now I need a few, few branches so they can be just wiggled in between. But what I wouldn't mind is using one of these blues or purples and, and run it for a few little, little branches. Just do this. There we go. So you're only going to see little bits and pieces of branches. You're not going to see the whole lot. So it's just creeping through. All right. I might even throw a little branch wandering out beyond. That, that'll be fine. I can always stick my finger in. All right, next step is the shed roof. So this particular blue that I had, that's not bad to start the roof off. So you get to know how much to put down. There is a limit as to how much chalk will take on the paper. So it can get overfilled with chalk. So that's a good place to start that roof line. I'm going to put some rust, rusty colours. A whole stash of colours here. A little bit of orange. Sort of a brown orange. Um, now a little, a little stronger rust colour. And I can go right to the top as well of the roof. Now it's shed lines, the, the corrugation of a shed, uh, you have to go the same as the end part here. So you've got to just keep your marks. I don't need to rub that in, that can just stay there. And then finally, a little bit of white over the top. And I can highlight the top of the roof. I guess I uh, just gotten to see. Now I haven't done the, the the black bits yet. I've saved that to last because it's really easy to put the black bits over the top. It is harder to get the white over the top. In fact you'll never get a lot um, strong white over the top of these colours. So that's as probably as good as it gets there. Now the black, which I think might be a Conti actually, it's a little thin one. So I'm going to put in the black bit, the little missing pieces of, of the, um, the tin. I'll just show you the picture again. So there's some missing bits of tin in here. So I'll pop that away. Um, and just curl up some bits. I'm constantly looking at the photograph. It's one of the things. You don't keep your eye off the photo. Don't imagine it. Sort of just doing, pressing firmly there. And I'll put a little line where the ridge capping is. A couple of little squiggles through here. A couple of cracks that way. And that's going to be the end there. What you can use this for, and I'll use it more later, is come in here like that. It's a little paper stump with nothing on it, but you can rub into the grooves. Now the other thing is, um, is there's some little cross poles. So if I put white over black, it's never going to be white, it, but it, it'll be enough for those cross, little cross poles there. Just try and get a little bit more on. So then I have those bits inside. Now moving on, there is a bit of chalk and I'll dust that off later on. Now the, um, the, the blue, so I need to separate, here's my picture again, so I need to separate the bluer tin with the rusty tin, another blue bit, that blue bit there. So what I'll do is undercoat those spaces, so I'm going to do that area. And here, and it's also a good idea to go with direction as well. 
a little bit light, but I'll um, I'll tone it down. Just marking it out. That part there's quite white. All right, I might put a little bit of purple that I have here or a darker blue. Let me see what's in the pack. There's some... It's a bit too strong. Let's see what the purple does. Just trial and error. And I think just don't be too precious with it and just be, be loose. Now, with this paper stump, I can do this. I can rub them in together. Gosh, that's good. It's just a neat little tool. It doesn't matter if a few bits of pink are showing, actually. It's really good. Okay, that'll do for now. And then there's um, some white here, but I happen to have this creamy yellowy colour, so I might pop that on there. I have, as I said, just added um, loose chalks into this set, so they're a bit of everything. Probably recommend you get 12, 12, uh, 24 or 36 of these, so I can rub that in as well. See what a handy tool that is. And a little bit of rust. This is a yeah, nice sanguine colour, it's called. Pop that in. See how quickly it's working. It's really great. While I've got it in my hand, I will do the rusty, strong rusty bits. Mm, that roof line should go up to there. Missed a bit. And you can see these corrugations are all turning as well. So they'll go upwards, then they'll flatten out, and then they'll go that way. So then I'll rub those in. An awful lot of chalk here. Anyway. Okay. Now, white. Where are we? So I can highlight those that a little bit further. And there's certainly, mm, I'm seeing some dark bits on there. So it's just playing with the colours a little bit more. I might even put black in because it's just a little bit too bright for the, for the painting, for the um, photograph. So I'll pop that in. It could be dark brown, but that's working. Okay, so... Right, that's pretty well it, but now I've got to put the black in. So I'm going to now do that detailing, which makes all the difference. I'll give you another look in here. There's lots of black bits. So you might think it looks pretty crap now, but the moment you put this in, it will shine. And the little bit of magic, the little detailing bits. So I said I've got, um, I think, a Conti here in my hand, which is nice and sharp just happened to be. I really need to tip this up. There's a lot of chalk sitting there. Uh, a couple of little cracks and things. As I said, I, I'm constantly looking at the photograph. And then a little bit of white, which is just a bit of highlight on that one. So I'm just doing that gently. And here. Everything takes time. I'm trying not to rush. But use that yellow colour a little bit there. Okay, bit of white. Mm. 
Mm, I really want to shake this off, but I can't at the moment. Um, okay. A little bit more black in there. I'm sort of free ranging at the moment. They're adding a bit. Now this end part here um, has got some more of the rusty colour there. And then I've got another blue bit. Brown. Hmm, I might go for a darker brown. I actually don't rub my finger in very much at all. As you can see, I'm using this thing more to get in there. And the blue or purple. You can use either one of those, it doesn't matter. Just lay actually that's the yellow one. I'm just layering All right now the black again. So putting those little details of black constantly looking. Now there's a lovely corrugated end to this shed. Whoops, it's broke it. <laughs> Now there is, I've just seen, some lovely yellow. So I'm just going to pop that on there. Just a bit of difference. You can see those lines changing as well. Okay, now interesting, the next bit, um, let's see if I can find a bigger black. Yep, there's one. If I just blacken that whole end part, let me show you the photo again. Down here, it's all in a dark space and there's just little bits of grey. So I would recommend just darkening that whole lot because I don't need any white. Now I get my paper stump, rub it in. There we go. And then I'll go back to this blue, they're all dirty now, this is what happens. Um, and I press down and I can pop those posts over the top and they will become grey. So just have a look at this. So I'd put a couple that way, another post that way. You could use um, even the purples as well. Let me just try that out. Mm, it's a bit darker, don't like it. And um, So one there and a post there. And I'm just putting a, put a few things in. See how that comes out as a grey, even though it's a blue. So that'll do. And the next bit is the grass. Right, now the main colour I like is yellow ochre in any medium. I love yellow ochre for the landscape and for grasses. So you can see how lovely that is. When you're doing grasses, just scribble. Just hold it down and scribble and change directions. You could put a bit of background in there. It's fine. If I had to use that, I can make, make some lines in the paddock. And So in the grasses, in the photograph, you can see here, I'm not doing the, that tin, but there are, there's little bits of green, there's certainly lots of shadow. I recommend bringing in, I'm going to pull in this um, terracotta colour again, which is sanguine, a little bit of that coming into the grass. Then I'll throw in anything and everything. Let's see what we've got. A bit of green underneath, scribbling side to side. I'm working my way forward. I like going at the angle. It kind of feels like the wind's blowing the grass. Okay, brown. There's always shadows under the grasses. 
if you don't like getting your hands dirty, I don't think it's for you because you do have to get pretty, pretty grubby. Um, but it's all good fun. So the more loose you are with grasses, the better. So I think, yeah, kind of just trying to make it look colourful, maybe a few longer ones. And I'm just about there. Time to sign. Whoops, no, that's too fat to sign. Where's my pencil? So there we are. Make sure you date your piece. Now I'm going to clear all this off and just get rid of all the chalk. So when you're, when you're done, or don't ever go that way. Um, go that way. Sorry, if I was the wrong direction then. Uh, so that the, the chalk falls downwards. If you go, obviously go over the sky, it's just going to discolour your sky and it, uh, you'll spoil it. Just do a little bit in there. And there we are, I'm done. So that's chalks, dirty hands and all, that's it. So it's, um, as I said, it's instant colour. You've got all these amazing colours to work with. And I actually do find it quite reasonably easy. Um, and that's because I can paint and it's just um, an extension from, from that. The worst part about, about pastel is you've got to frame it behind glass. It is fragile. And so I've got one here, which I'll put on the table. And this one, hopefully it's not too much shine. It's, it's one I was really happy with. As I said, I prefer oil and acrylic, but pastel worked really well for this little river scene. To, to have all this movement in the water, to have that, I found you probably couldn't achieve that as well in regular paint. So that was, um, you know, with a fine brush. I mean, this is easy because you've got this pastel. You can squiggle and wiggle and create all that lovely movement. So I loved it for this purpose. And I would, you know, when I see it now, it, it was um, enormously fun to work with as well. There's just too many amazing things to play with. And um, so there you go. That's pastels for you. And, um, and just enjoy, observe and look and get your hands dirty. Who cares? It's just have fun. Thank you to all my subscribers and Patreons and also to DJ Gosper for allowing me to use her wonderful music. Keep calm and paint. <laughs>